So why do we allow ourselves to pay so much attention to what it is that other people are saying to us? And why is it that we can't seem to move away from what those people are saying? Because um, I've had a few emails from people saying that every time they try and speak to someone or open up about something, they get looked at like they're crazy. Um, but you have to kind of remember, guys, as well, that when you've gone from being your old conditioned self in, and you're now becoming someone who's spiritual and you've entered into the dark night of the soul, that's a real hard concept for someone else to grasp. You have to kind of cast your mind back to how you was when you were still in the matrix. And if one of your friends had come to you and said, hey, look, you know, I'm not feeling so great here. I'm, I'm in the dark night of the soul and <laughs> my spiritual being is awakening up. Um, you would probably look at them like they're crazy as well. So there's that kind of little part that goes to it. But also underneath that is the whole point of what goes on with, with the generational beliefs, the traditional beliefs and the conditioning and stuff. We have all been bred to have ultimate non-self-belief, if you like. So we can't we can't identify our strong points, our true strong points, our true essence as beings. What we tend to do is we tend to identify ourselves by the things that we're good at. But sometimes the things that we're good at are not the things that ultimately we really should or perhaps would like to be doing in life. The things that we should be doing, and in my case, things like this video and speaking, but yet I was the thick child, remember? and dyslexic, so reading and writing doesn't come easy, but yet I'm doing things like this and writing all the time. So the thing, and that's the whole point of the thing in life that I should be doing, which is this, is not the thing in life that I'm actually good at reading and writing. So I wanted to kind of leave that to help some people to try and understand that that's why we lack self-belief and it's through the self-belief that we pay attention to what other people are saying to us because when they say something to us that might be negative towards us it stings us but it only stings us stings us because our self-belief is low and like i say our self-belief might be low because we're doing things in life that we're good at and not necessarily doing things in life that we want to do and by doing that, we're denying ourselves the opportunity to grow into the thing it is that we really want to do and let ourselves be good at that thing. We stick to the thing in life that we're actually already good at. And we might think we're already good at that because of our grading at school or because of what people have told you. Oh, you're really good at you're really good at that thing. And, you know, I don't know, you're you're a natural type of person who can build engines. And so you become a mechanic. You got no interest in in mechanics whatsoever but it just becomes something that you identify with and you you then spend your life underneath a car and that's not what you want to do maybe your strong point this is why i use me as the example in that maybe your strong point was actually the area that you've always thought you were no good at i hope that kind of makes a little bit of sense to you and another thing as well with that that i can bring into that is my love of wild camping and being out in mountain ranges. Um, I have a terrible phobia of open spaces and also heights. So therefore, I am actually probably the world's worst hiker. Um, <laughs> because there's often times when I'm out there and I've reached my, my barriers and I kind of have to turn around and come back down the mountains or I have to, you know, I have to find some trees to break up the big scenery that's going on around me because the open space will literally crush me. The exposure will crush me. However, being in the mountains is my absolute ultimate number one love on earth. Is hiking and being in the mountains, sleeping out in the wild. That is, that's where I found the guy that I am now. That's why I'm always preaching about time alone is so vital. That's where I found the guy that I am now. That's where I found my true love in life because I know that... Um, should anything in my life, everything in my life, if it all fell away, I have, I found me. That makes me feel comfortable and I found me out in the mountains. So there's always going to be that very strong affinity to it. And I think we've all got that. We just don't know it. Um, but I hope that gives some of you some kind of thought to, as, a, as another little perspective on maybe how you could look at your life. Are you looking at the things in life if you want to change your life, are you looking at the things in life that you're good at and you're still trying to drive yourself down that route? 
Whereas perhaps what you would ultimately be really great at and thrive at is the thing you might be most scared of. In my case, heights and open spaces. Re reading, writing, talking out loud because I doubt myself because of the lack of self-belief because of my ability to um, what's, uh, narrate myself properly. But anyway, I'm going to leave it there because my battery is about to die. So I hope that was quite interesting though and just gives you a different perspective. And I also hope you can still see me because the screen has gone dark. Um, so anyway, I hope you all had a great weekend. It's, it's a beautiful sunny day here. I'm in the woods in nature. It's, it's lovely. And I'm now going to go back to my caravan, which is a nice walk along the river, um, have some dinner and then probably meditate. <laughs> anyway, guys, I hope you're all well. Love every one of you. And thank you to the new few subscribers who have come along this week and I uh, hope you're enjoying and I'll do a few more videos in the week look forward to it see you guys thank you